Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. As we all know, in order to pass Nebosh IG certification, we have to pass IG1. Students, they are usually guided through these pass papers so that they have a clear idea in order to have uh, an open mind regarding the upcoming exam. So this way, we have decided to work on IG1 past paper. This video consists of three main contents. The open book examination question paper that has been held in February 2022. Then we will guide students for the answer template provided by Nibosh and then the solution of tasks will be discussed. So the video obviously it will be a lengthy one. We will try to guide students briefly but still it will take more time in order to discuss the scenario of the task then the template as well as the solution of all tasks. So just bear with us. So let's begin with the question paper. We will discuss the information shared in the question sheet or question paper. This is Nibosh Management of Health and Safety Unit IG1. It's an open book examination available for 24 hours. Uh, there is a little guidance for the learners. An open book examination, it's not invigilated and you are free to use any sort of information or resources available like your course notes, websites. By submitting this completed assessment for marking, you are declaring it is entirely your own work, knowingly claiming work to be your own when it's someone else's work is malpractice, which carries severe penalties. This means that you must not collaborate with or copy work from others. Neither should you cut and paste blocks of text from the internet or other sources. So they have discussed little about the malpractice cases. So no one is allowed to copy paste anything from the internet or copy paste anything from any uh, any friend or anyone. So uh, submitting this answer uh, sheet, it will uh, be considered as it's your own work. You have to declare it. The examination begins with a realistic scenario to set the scene. You will then need to complete a series of tasks based on this scenario. Each task will consist of one or more questions. Your responses to most of these tasks should wholly or partly draw and relevant information from the scenario. The task will clearly state the extent to which this is required. So it says that uh, some of the tasks they are bound to the scenario only but for others you can use external sources of information as well. The marks available are shown in brackets to the right of each question are part of each question. This will help guide you to the amount of information required in your response. So there is marks mentioned in front of each task. Accordingly you have to provide the information required. In general one mark is given for each correct technical point that is clearly demonstrated. So we have to clearly demonstrate a clear information, a technical information to get one mark. Avoid writing too little as this will make it difficult for the examiner to award marks. Single word answers or lists are unlikely to gain marks as this would not normally be enough to show understanding or a connection with the scenario. So this is a brief guidance regarding the answer sheet you are not expected to write more than 3000 words in total try to distribute your time and word count proportionately across all tasks it is recommended that you use the answer template please attempt all tasks so total we have 3000 words it means for 100 marks we have to write 3000 words students are advised to write 3000 plus minus 200 words. It depends on the technical information provided and the answer sheet. And normally I have seen many students that have passed the uh, paper uh, though they have wrote almost 1900, 2000 words and they have passed it. So it depends upon the technicality of your information that you are mentioning in the answer sheet. For each mark we have to write almost 30 words Sometimes uh, information can be clearly demonstrated in 
15 to 20 words or maybe it will take 40 45 words but for a task of 10 marks you have to write 300 words for a task of 20 marks you have to write down at least 600 words now let's discuss the scenario the information that has been shared for the task a car showroom for an international car sales organization is situated on an industrial estate on the outskirts of a town the showroom mainly sells new cars but occasionally sells used ones car sales are driven by ambitious targets if these targets are met the sales force receive large financial bonuses the managing director reports to the regional national and international boards and delegates the responsibility for meeting sales targets to the head of sales so it's been mentioned a uh, car showroom which sells used and new cars and they are uh, really admissious uh, for the sales it means the approach of the management and the sales team is to sell more cars or more vehicles and they are given targets for the same if these targets are met then they are given with financial bonuses and the managing director he is only concerned with the reports to national regional and international boards and the responsibility for meeting sales is given to head of sales the indoor showroom is a single story building with an open plan design the center of the showroom displays four examples of the new car for sale towards the back of the showroom are three desks where the sales team talk with customers to the right of the desk areas are two separate offices one office is occupied by the HOS and one by the MD next to these offices is a waiting area that includes a drinks dispensing machine a few tables and chairs for information displays customer sitting etc and a television various new and used cars are parked in neat rows around most of the outside of the showroom building also outside near the entrance there are 12 dedicated parking bays for visiting customers vehicles for test driving and vehicles being prepared for handover to customer so this is a description regarding the showroom inside there are two offices there is a specific area for the customers and they are provided with the, some displays for information proper seating there and a television there is a, a four vehicles that are parked in the inside the showroom new vehicles or new cars are there and outside they are also parking available for uh, vehicles handover for vehicles parking the HOS has 10 years service at the showroom they are driven by car sales usually at the expense of safety so the HOS he has 10 years of experience in the showroom and his main aim is to sell more cars and even he has to ignore safety for it this attitude is shared by the leadership team and the sales supervisor so the same has been seen in the overall team inside the showroom as well as the sales supervisor means the sales supervisors along with the HOS and other team members they are concerned with the sales only sales targets only because they are financially getting bonuses for the same the sales supervisor has five years service and has a strong influence on those reporting to them so there is a peer group pressure exerted by the sales supervisor over all who are reporting to him including a very impressionable 17 year old sales apprentice so there is one young guy he is 17 years old he is a sales apprentice working there in the car showroom he is also reporting to the sales supervisor the sales team all get along very well and are given a great deal of freedom to do what they like what matters most is getting the job done and achieving the sales target so the apprentice as well as the sales team they have been given a freedom to do whatever they want 
but they have to achieve the sale targets. As a result, most of the sales team take chances for the greater good of the team and to maximize bonuses. That's why all of the team members they are concerned with the sales only in order to get more bonuses. The sales apprentice in an attempt to fit in thinks it is humorous to use the fire extinguisher to wake up the sales supervisor who is sleeping during the air break. The sales supervisor sees the comical side and puts the fire extinguisher back. So the sales apprentice he is trying to fit in in the team. That's why he thinks like in a humorous way that to wake up the sales supervisor while he is sleeping in the break time and the sales supervisor though he see him but he ignore him. The remaining member of the sales team is, is a senior sales person. There is another guy and is a senior sales person. They have worked at the showroom for a long time. They are more cautious than the others and have safety concerns. So this one guy, the senior sales person, he is different from the rest of the team who is concerned only with the with the bonuses but this senior sales person he is also concerned with the safety. One of these concerns is about the lack of attention paid during the moment of vehicle. Although there are signs saying do not use mobile phones while in vehicles, the senior sales person has observed near misses due to rushing the job. The apprentice using their phone while driving and speeding in the car park in an attempt to show off. So there are even signboards displayed or signages displayed which shows do not use mobile phone while in vehicles. But still the apprentices they are rushing for the job to be done as fast and they are over speeding in the car park area though there are too many near misses being observed by the senior cell persons. They think some of this is due to a lack of training and supervision. They think that this is because of the insufficient training provided to the team members and there is no proper supervision for team and no proper control over the near misses. Having witnessed a very short induction with the apprentice and normally the system is like the new guys or the new members they are given with a short or uh, insufficient induction training. There have been other similar events in the past some involving minor injuries. Many near misses been happened in the past and it caused minor injuries but there is no record of any of these near misses of injuries. There is no record available, nothing is recorded or reported properly. In the last 12 years only one fire related incident has been recorded. There was a false alarm where a child had read the instructions on one of numerous call points that read brick glass press here. So that is exactly what the child did. The sales supervisor had assumed the role of fire marshal and all the untrained escorted visitors and workers to the assigned assembly point nominated in the written emergency procedure. In the past 12 years there had been a fire related incident which was caused by a false fire alarm. A child he just read the four call points instruction break glass press here so he did the same the same supervisor he doesn't have any training play the role of fire marshal but at the event of false alarm he tried to escort visitors and workers and to guide them for the assembly point which is mentioned in the written emergency procedure. So it means there is an emergency procedure exists in the organization, but it's not been followed or if it's not been planned. Not even the workers really knew what they were doing as such events do not happen very often and no one can remember ever practicing the emergency procedure. There is a written emergency procedure available in the car showroom, but no one knows or even didn't experience such a situation before because there is no proper arrangements for fire mock drills. The senior sales person talked in confidence to the sales supervisor about these safety concerns. 
Surprisingly, the sales supervisor replies that management feels that overall fire risk is low and there is no need for frequent fire drills. So, the senior sales person he talks to sales supervisor regarding the uh, his safety concerns regarding the fire drills, but he replied that management feels that there is no or less uh, fire risk in the showroom and there is no need for frequent fire drills. The senior sales person is confused and highlights that patrol vehicles are in the showroom and emphasizes the compliance obligation to inform, check lumps and improve through such drills. Though the senior sales person he knows that there is patrol vehicles in the showroom and he emphasizes compliance for uh, such drills so that the team can be properly informed, they can properly learn and improve themselves in order to deal with any foreseen incident. They finish the conversation by pointing out that all the fire action notices around the building are not just there for the benefit of visitors but to help protect people and to satisfy insurers too. Despite these personal concerns, the senior salesperson still feels a lot of pressure to fit in with the rest of the group and not worry about the unsafe working that has become a common practice. So, despite he has some concerns regarding health and safety, he tried to fit in the group and just avoid it or ignore the unsafe practices onward. The managing director is somewhat detached from the day-to-day -day practical operation because of attendance at various off-site exhibition national and international conferences and frequent online meetings. So the managing director he is busy with the meetings, national, international and online meetings. As a result, they delegate the daily running of showroom to the sales team and any health and safety responsibilities to the choice. So the head of the sales, he has been given the authority or the responsibility to manage health and safety in the showroom. However, the HOS has not had any specific health and safety training to fulfill this role. Though he don't have any training for health and safety in order uh, to properly follow its health and safety, he is just fulfilling this role. Although the senior sales person has bravely raised the fire evacuation testing safety issue with the MD in the past, the MD sees no reason to challenge unsafe behaviors and interfere with a successful team if it is meeting the sales target. In the past, there is a meeting of MD with the senior sales person and he raised the same issue for fire evacuation testing safety, but the MDs responded that it shouldn't be interfered with a successful team because they are already achieving their sales target. So he thinks if they are achieving their sales targets, it means they are behaving safely in the showroom. However, they do accept that there have been some lucky escapes from incidents that could have been more serious. But nothing bad has happened so far, so why worry? Means some incidents happened in the past but the outcome it was low so why we should worry about the incident in the future the senior sales person respectfully suggests a different view that profits and bonuses can be whipped out easily by the large costs associated with even one workplace accident what the senior sales person thinks and we've if there is any accident, it will cost more than the bonuses and the profits. In addition, the unwelcome attention of enforcement agencies and the media. The senior salesperson view is that is just a matter of time before a serious accident happens. The senior salesperson view is that is just a matter of time before a serious accident happens. The same day in the late afternoon. The sales supervisor asks the apprentice to move a car from the car park to a hard standing location right in front of the entrance ready for customer collection. The apprentice locates the car as instructed. As they move the car to the required location, they answer a call on their mobile phone.
and stopped the car in front of the showroom while simultaneously raising the mobile phone to their ear with one hand and exiting the vehicles they trip over the seat belt which has not quite fully retracted so even there was displayed signage is not to use mobile phone while driving the vehicle but still this apprentice when he is moving the vehicles to the required location for customer collection he is using mobile phone and while he is coming out from the vehicle he just trip because of the seat belt which was stuck in his one arm they stretch out their other arm to cushion the fall arm to the concrete hard standing the apprentice hastily gets up looks around in embarrassment to see if anyone is looking and acts as if nothing has happened however the sales supervisor witnessed the seemingly harmless looking incident later the two of them have a conversation in the rest area about the incident so even the sales supervisor he saw him while he stuck because of the seat belt and he fall on the concrete hard standing later the two of them have a conversation in the rest area about the incident the sales supervisor promises to spare the apprentice embarrassment by saying it's a matter for you and you alone as long as you don't say a word to anyone else neither will i so the sales supervisor he just promised to encourage him not to discuss or disclose this incident the following day the apprentice arrives at work with a plaster cast on the wrist the wrist had swollen and become tender and painful they had gone to hospital and had an x-ray that confirmed a small fracture of the wrist the plaster cast allows limited movement of the fingers the sales supervisor talks to the apprentice and advises them to say that they fill off a bike at home should anyone ask the apprentice agrees and does not see this as a problem they are put on light duties until further notice the senior sales person is suspicious and later takes the apprentice aside and informs them about the implications of accident at work so again the next day when he comes to the workplace though he has assumed that there is nothing serious injury but the on the day of the incident he go to hospital for x ray and it confirmed that there is a small fracture in the wrist and he has a plaster cast which limits the movement of fingers and they had been limited uh, for the work they had given limited responsibilities in the car showroom and the sales supervisor he advised him if anyone ask what happened just inform that you fell off a bike at home but the senior sales person he is suspicious and he uh, just discuss this with the apprentice and he discuss the implication of accidents this is how the scenario looks like now we will move to the task section of the question paper in task 1 the influence of peers comment on the influence of peers on health and safety at the car showroom note uh, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario so we can get informations regarding the influence of peers that exists in the car showroom we can get the information from the scenario as well as uh, we can access to any other source of information and this task we have to comment how the influence of peers has affected the attitude or behaviors of various staff members or team members in the car showroom in many situations we have seen peer group pressure exerted by the top management towards the middle management so we have to discuss this peer group pressure at various parts of the scenario we have seen so we have to point out or comment on those peer group pressures task 2 emergency procedure so task 2 is related to emergency procedures element 3 so it has total three parts in part a what are the positive points about fire safety arrangements at the car showroom 
So we have to discuss about the positive aspects of the car showroom, that the measures they have taken to control the fire emergency. Next in part B, what are the negative points about fire safety arrangements at the car showroom? As we have seen, there are some deficiencies in the arrangements of fire. So we have to discuss those points. We have total 10 marks. At least we should provide 10 to 12 informations to get full marks. In part C, why is it important to practice emergency procedure? So it's a general part. We can get information from internet. We have total 5 marks. So at least we have to provide 5 information. Now let's move to task 3, accident reporting. So task 3 is related to accident reporting. Within our workplace, there are formal procedures for reporting accidents. We have two parts for this task. Comment on the sales supervisor approach to reporting the apprentice accidents. As we have seen, the sales supervisor attitude towards the accident happened to the apprentice. So how his behavior or his approach affected the apprentice to report the accident. Next, how should the apprentice accident be reported by the employer we have five marks for this task as well so we have to provide five information at least five information or we can provide six to seven next in task four the legal reason for health and safety management we have one part what are the legal reasons why health and safety should be managed at the car showroom so legislative part of the a responsibility of the employer should be discussed here. What are the reasons that health and safety should be managed in the car showroom? We have 10 marks for this task and at least we have to provide 10 to 12 information. In task 5, workers responsibility in the workplace. So we this task is concerned with the workers responsibilities. It is likely that the injured apprentice may have contravened some of their responsibilities as a worker within International Labour Organization Convention C155, Occupational Safety and Health Convention 1981, Article 19 and Associated Recommendation R164, Occupational Safety and Health Recommendation 1981. Comment on the extent to which Article 19 of C155 and Recommendation 16 of R164 may have been contravened. So we have to comment on the basis of Article 19 of C155 and Recommendation 164, Article 16. So we have to comment based upon these articles up to which extent the part of these articles have been contravened. So we have to discuss here. You should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from scenario. So we can take details our information from the scenario as well as we can check in the article 19 of C155 and R164. So we can compare these articles with the situation of health and safety in the showroom. Next we will move to task 6. We have total marks of 10. It belongs to near misses. It is often a matter of chance that a near miss turns into an accident. How could investigation of the previous near misses have helped prevent this accident? So we have to discuss as there are many near misses earlier, but it was not properly reported. What if these near misses were reported, what it could have impacted the accident? How it could have prevented the accident? You should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from scenario. So we can get details from the scenario as well as we can get details from any source of information. Now let's move to task 7, health and safety culture. So task 7 belongs to health and safety culture, which is element 3 of IG1. What appears to be the negative indicators of health and safety culture at the car showroom? Note, you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. So what are the negative indicators of health and safety culture that has been found in the car showroom we have total marks of 20 at least we should provide 22 22 informations how you think is the negative indicator that exists in the car showroom we have to comment on that task 8 
health and safety management rules and responsibilities it belongs to element 2 of iju1 health and safety management rules and responsibilities it is important that everyone in the organization knows their health and safety rules and responsibilities comment on the effectiveness of rules and responsibilities in relation to health and safety management in the car showroom note you should focus on rules and responsibilities and not the health and safety management system note you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario so we have total marks 10 at least we should provide 10 to 12 information regarding the rules and responsibilities of various positions in the car showroom so we have to discuss the managing director roles and his responsibilities the senior sales person roles and his responsibilities the supervisor the sales supervisor roles and his responsibilities and the apprentice roles and his responsibilities so we have to discuss it here now we will move to the answer template we will discuss it in short and then we will move to this towards the solution this is the answer template provided by the nibosh you have to mention your name here your learner number and the learning partner name and by this way you have to save this file with the same name tolson dominic 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 your learner number and then learning partner details as advised by nibosh please send your completed answer document with your surname your first name your nibosh learner number and your learning partner's name so we have saved with the same profile at least you could have a, a better idea how to save the file on what you will see various tasks the influence of peers task 1 then the emergency procedure part a b c then accident reporting part a part b legal reasons worker responsibilities then near misses so this way we will we have to mention each answer in the specific box on one please note that this form already has 298 words once we will solve the paper we will count the words here and then we have to deduct this number of words 298 words should be deducted and you will get the number of words you have solved your solution paper here in this part you have to provide the sources of information that you have utilized to solve this paper it can be your course books any references on internet or any other source of information that you have utilized to solve this paper end of examination now follow the instruction on submitting your answer in the nibosh open book examination technical learner guide all open book examination guidance documents can be found on the nibosh website so they will give you the detail at the end you have to upload this answer sheet uh, to nibosh before the time finish so this is a little bit idea regarding the answer template if anyone is using any other document for this for the solution so they have to follow this note please note if you decide not to use this template you will need to include the same information on your submission including the following your unit code for example ig1 the examination date your name your nibosh learner number your learning partner's name page number of for all pages question numbers next to each of your responses so this way we will find the details and the answer template now we will move towards the solution and we will discuss all the tasks this is one solution and we will discuss for your guidance we already understands the nibosh mal practice policy this document has been shared just to understand or guide the students task 1 the influence of peers question 1 the influence of peers plays a significant role in health and safety culture of any organization and as evident from the scenario the overall health and safety culture is negative and it is also having a negative influence on the new employees so we will discuss the negative aspects of the car showroom we will discuss how the peer group pressure existed in the organization 
In negative cultures, the environment is created from top level and same peer pressure is exerted to the bottom. In current, the head of sale is an experienced and influential person having 10 years of experience in the car showroom. He prioritizes sales targets over the expense of safety of workers. In the same way, the head of sales shares this negative attitude with his sales supervisor who in turn contributes to negative pressure to the other team members. The scenario depicts that he has huge influence on his team members. The sales supervisor is only concerned about the sales targets and ignores any blunders or unsafe acts by his team. The managing director showed negative culture when senior salesperson discussed the fire evacuation testing by commenting he cannot challenge his team when they are meeting the sales target. All the suggestions provided by team relating to health and safety should be appreciated and proper actions should be taken to minimize the hazards. In an attempt to fit in the peer group, the sales team also ignores health and safety standards and performs jobs in casual and unsafe ways to achieve sales target. The fact that sales supervisor ignored the use of fire extinguisher by sales apprentice for waking him up and taking it on a humorous note clearly shows the impact of negative health and safety culture among the peers. The emergency equipment should be handled with great care. In a negative peer group, even the authentic and logical concerns of few team members are ignored or taken lightly as shown in the scenario. The senior salesperson is very much concerned about health and safety matters and he has raised his voice also in front of the sales supervisor but it was taken very lightly by declaring all risks to be low. Lack of interest and commitment of top management towards health and safety coupled with negative peer group pressure is forcing the senior salesperson to fit in this negative culture. So we have just discussed the influence of peers that has been created at various times or various part of the car showroom from various levels. Now we will move towards task 2. As we know in task 2 there are three parts. It belongs to the emergency procedure. Part A, some of the positive aspects about the fire safety arrangements at car showroom given in the current scenario are as follows. Availability of fire extinguisher at dedicated spots. We have seen there is fire extinguisher available. The apprentice is playing with him. So it means availability for extinguisher is there. Fire marshal rule, even the sales supervisor, he is not trained, but he still in the event of this false fire alarm, he acted as a role of fire marshal. Dedicated assembly point, it's been seen that in case of the emergency, the sales supervisor, he was trying to escort the workers and visitors towards the assembly point. And then there is a fire alarm system also available at various call points. Then the safety board, fire safety signs or uh, fire action notices are displayed in the car showroom. So these are the positive aspects of the car showroom regarding the fire safety arrangements. Now we will move towards part B. The negative points about fire safety arrangements in the car showroom, lack of management commitment regarding the arrangements for fire safety, no training of fire emergency handling inappropriate use of safety equipment, fire marshal ignoring misuse of fire safety equipment, no emergency fire evacuation testing, inadequate fire safety arrangements, no drills for emergency, untrained fire marshal, casual risk assessment or we can call it as a generic risk assessment and no induction training on fire safety equipment. So this is part B of task 2. Now we will move towards part C. Emergency procedure are developed to train the workers on what specific action are required to minimize the loss and damage in any event of an emergency. Besides, it's a legal requirement to develop and train workforce on emergency procedures. These procedures must be practiced to swiftly perform required actions without any delay in dealing with emergency situation. It is also a legal requirement to practice the emergency procedure and that's why drills are carried out. Practicing these emergency procedures will improve 
the response of team and highlight the areas of concern or requirement of any specific safety equipment. Each team member knows its assigned role which should be performed in case of any emergency. The state and proper functioning of emergency equipment is validated in practicing emergency procedure. This also ensures the readiness of equipment in case of emergency. So we have discussed the two tasks. Now we will move towards the last part. We have to mention the documents and sources of information that has been utilized in order to solve this paper. So we have taken information from the scenario from IG1 book and some references that we have utilized to get ideas and to solve these tasks. We have total words of 3858. We will deduct 298 and our total words will be 3565. So this way we will solve our complete tasks and we will solve all tasks properly. We will cross check it if there is any deficiency in the question. And we have to submit the answer sheet to Nibosh website. I hope you would have get proper idea how to solve open book examination Nibosh IG1 paper. For any assistance or any guidance, you can contact through call or WhatsApp 0092345159797971. Thanks for watching the video. For upcoming videos, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel.